Okay. Thank you, Matt. All right, let's see. So it's what, April 22nd, 6.30 p.m., Rec Commission meeting. Um, we have uh, a few items on the agenda here, beginning with the uh, minutes from March 18th, with uh, which uh, Gene sent out uh, maybe last week. I can't remember, but uh, let's start with uh, that motion or that uh, business. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from 318? Do I need a waiver? I can do that. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All I right. Do. So we've got a yeah. motion and a second. A second. All right. Got change for Third. a second. All right. All right. Any, uh, so any comments or discussion on the minutes? I just want to say that I need to admit it had sent me the link for the recording of this meeting or of that meeting of the last meeting, which I didn't have, which I will add to it. Okay. Would you, do you, are you, do you intend on changing the minutes then? Well, I mean, we should just, I add that recording? I mean, if you're gonna, uh, by add the recording, you mean just add a link to it or? Yes. yes. Oh yeah. I don't think we need to do that. Okay. Do you, do you normally do that, Matt? Actually, I don't recall if you do or not. I, but. I have been doing it. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah, that's fine. If you want to copy a URL, then let's, let's do that. But otherwise it's substance. There's no substance in substantive changes, right? No, that would be okay. just to add them. Cool. Then um, any other or any comments? Okay. Then uh, let's just go around the, let's, just raise hands. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes, raise your hand. And and now it looks like Gene, are you with your yes? Oh yeah, okay. All right, we, we are <laughs> unanimous. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, nothing. Okay, thank you. So the next item on the list would be public comment. Do, Ray, do we have anybody in the forum? In the right. waiting room or, or any public members? About, we, uh, we Eddie. have one attendee. Uh, if there is public comment, I can open that up. Uh, okay. For them. Hedy. To... Okay. Um, Hedy, if you have, a, if you'd like to make a comment, raise your hand. We'll give you a few seconds. If not, we'll just assume you're going to enjoy the meeting. Um, all right. Okay. Let's move forward then. So next on the item on the agenda would be the out. Reach program updates. Becky, that's you. Hi, thank you all for having me um, back to one of your meetings. We've been really busy in outreach. Um, there's a couple really exciting um, things we've been working on that Ray asked me to um, bring you all up to date. Um, Ray, uh, you want me to do Rise first? Yes, please. All right, I'm going to share my screen. I just enabled, so I think it should be good right now. Yeah. All right, so I'll see. Yep, I can see it. Yep. I'm going to. All right. Um. So. Since um. Oh, I don't know when we started. Maybe November. We started talking to this organization called RISE. RISE is a um, national nonprofit that works with um, major sports um, industries um, to do identity and bias and um, cultural competency trainings. Um, so we've been meeting with them. Uh, they helped me make a little slideshow today to kind of bring you all abreast. Um, so RISE is a national nonprofit that educates and empowers the sports community to eliminate racial discrimination, champion social justice, and improve race relations. Um, they have a video that's uh, just a couple minutes long, but- How many um, people feel the burden of systemic racism? I've kind of gone through some tough times mentally. This failure prevents full unity and greatness. I just don't understand 
why the world has to be like this. For when the world darkens, sport can grow its power. It feeds a burning flame. And as the winds of change carry those embers to every corner of our country, sport bridges divides and builds hope. Rises the national not-for-profit, creating a nation unified through sport, committed to racial equity and social justice. Through comprehensive partnerships, customized programming, and cutting edge fan experiences, we are at the vanguard of educating and empowering the sports community across all ages and levels, including athletes, coaches, staff. And I think you guys kind of get the um, mm -hmm. vibe, and it is long, and I'm aware of sure. time. Um, so the program goals is to foster trust, break down barriers, encourage positive communication between youth and law enforcement and um, local responders. They deliver leadership and cultural competency curriculum development, addressing topics such as community building, bias awareness. Um, they do trust building and identity exploration. They facilitate the perspectives and relationship building and discuss um, participants' challenges, emphasizing their collective responsibility to drive positive change and strengthen communities. Um, right now, we have 10 Amherst Regional Middle School students participating. Um, they opted into the program. Um, we have two Amherst police officers attending weekly and two community responders from CRESS. Um, Jennifer Moyston from the Office of DEI is also in person and then Ray and I um, are also there and we have a RISE facilitator who also works with our morning movement and mentoring program. Thank you, can I ask, a, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt, a quick clarifying question. Is this the video we're talking about this being sports related, is this, but I haven't seen anything on the goals that talk about athletics or sports. Is, it, is, is this sort of a, a hybrid or it's a hybrid. So it's the program that we're doing. Um, Rise granted us um, a program. So they're paying for the program. Um, and it's called Building Bridges Through Basketball. And um, in a minute, um, up, Ray's up next. Um, so what it does is it has um, nine areas of... Um, nine modules that we're doing over six weeks. So the kids do some uh, work on one of the modules and then they play basketball. And then they do some work on the modules and then they play basketball. So all the adults are partnering with the kids. We're having um, deep discussion about identity, equity, equality, bias, privilege and power. Um, and so we all go through the exercises together and then we play basketball like kind of um, making connections between the adults and the kids. So that's where the uh, sports metaphor comes in. So they are, um, RISE is um, partners with the MLB, NBA, NHL, NFL, and lots of college um, colleges um, throughout the country. And the goal is to provide education and outreach to empower youth to make changes um, about how race is viewed in our country. Thank you. All right. our, our uh, I had a quick question. Um, so how were the children, how were the kids, the middle school students, how were they chosen or how did they get involved? Um, it was opened on our, um, it was put in the ARPS update, sent to middle school principals to share with their students. Um, most of the students who are participating are um, also involved in the morning movement and mentoring program, which I'll talk about next. Um, Ray, do you want to talk about uh, the impacts of the program? Sure. Um, uh, the The students that come in there think that the basketball is a very powerful bridge for many of our students, uh, either because they have ambition of playing at at uh, you know, middle school, high school levels, they want to get better and compete at that, at that level. Or some of them just in a recreational sense, that's the place where people are getting together and having these conversations. And so, they, so they come in for them. We have students in there that may never play in a, in a game that matters because it's not yet a, a, an, a, an ability sort of thing for them. It is a matter of co-identity. It's a matter of 
of getting together and and you know uh, Becky brings food in the morning. Uh, there are people there that that care about them and are and are investing in them. And so it's it's a chance to have conversations with people in a gym with basketball around them. Um, and so we I, I do uh, being involved in it. I'm, it is a, a really cool split between the 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 the. The, the sort of workshop portion and then the kids get really excited about getting out and doing the basketball the basketball side and it's a it's a fun game uh you know kids at different levels are trying to include uh and trying to include and be included in that in that portion and it is a nice sort of uh, uh, end of a of a sometimes challenging session of conversations <clears throat> The feedback has been pretty strong. The facilitator that Becky uh, um, uh, will certainly talk about here and with Morning Movement, the facilitator is outstanding. I think there's a really strong uh, sense of trust between the facilitator and the participants, uh, ourselves included. There's a there's a really strong sense of faith and, and trust in the facilitator that we're going to be thinking about things and we're going to be thinking critically about ourselves and how we fit in. And so it really is a comprehensive uh, activity. Um, so all of you are invited to our culmination event on uh, May 4th from 9 a.m. to 11 um, a.m. in the middle school gym. Um, we're going to have uh, a panel with some of the youth participants, officers, and adult participants to share about um, their perspectives, insights, and stories of growth. The kids will get their certificate, and um, we'll also feed everyone. Actually, APD, I think, is going um, to serve breakfast that morning for us. Um, but it's... Um, Here's their information. If uh, you don't know much about RISE, the curriculum is absolutely outstanding. Um, it's it's um, pretty amazing to watch these kids have very nuanced conversations about race and bias and how it impacts them and their perceptions on how it impacts police and to have police respond. Um, to see the connections that they're making with the adults in the room is really like impactful to like see kids run over when Andrew uh, Coblin gets there. Like they just, it's really making such a difference. And um, particularly one of the students who's participating is not always strong with his behavior at school. And he is like shining in this program. Um, and it, it's an absolute, joy to be a part of having difficult conversations with kids and watching kids grow and their understanding and adults grow because we don't know how kids think about things until we talk to them about it. So it's just, it's a fantastic program and um, I'd love to have you all come by and uh, join the culminating event. So does anyone have any questions on RISE? Yes. I have so will this program point. continue? Sorry, Andrew. Will this continue this program? Um, we um so Rise granted us um programming. Um we'll do another session in the fall and likely in the spring as well. Um we've heard lots of feedback from the adults and kids that they don't want it to end. Um so we're looking at trying to do something over the summer with them um, because it's been so impactful. Is there plans for other schools to be involved too? Um, we might bring it up to the high school next year. We started with the middle school because the first time you do um, a program that, you know. I was thinking somewhat... younger, to be honest with you. Um. But... We had not thought of going younger, although when the sixth grade moves to the middle school, we could definitely have that conversation. Um, I think the difficulty with younger kids is um, we'd have to really like, I think fifth, sixth grade would be the lowest we could go. Right. Okay, like, yeah, curious. we can certainly look going forward 
Um, we really wanted a kind of contained program this first time to see what it mm -hmm. was going to look like and how it was going to be, how it was going to be managed. Um, so we stayed with seventh and eighth grade because we, frankly, because of morning movement, we know those kids the best. Um, and we knew which kids like, you know, they opted into the program. So we, we knew them a little more and could talk with them about what it was going to be like, where we're not in any of the other schools. Right. Okay. Matt, I think, did you have your hand up a second ago? Uh, I had the same question as Jane. Okay. Um, I have a question myself, which is, um, does the benefit of the program, I guess, extend beyond like the 17 participants in their immediate family? Like, are they, do they come out of there with the ability to, any of the people participating, they come out with the ability to sort of kind of share the good news for lack of a better term, or is this just like an opportunity for those 10 students and the other seven uh, folks to, you know, become more aware and just more empathetic to, you know, this situation, I guess. So um, I think for the kids to like, several of the kids are participating in the culminating event by serving on a panel um, and sharing with people their experience. Um, I think also as they talk to their friends about it, I think that's very impactful. Um, we'd love to do a bigger run next time again we were just really cautious about if we're sure. going to do it we have to do it right and so we were um a little uh closer with keeping it small this session than we otherwise would and that's not it, it could be scaled up mm -hmm. yes i'm sorry it could, it could be scaled up too with this okay sorry Ray, yes, the, the, it's not just with the student participants either we had uh, valuable members of the community reaching out because they heard about what we were trying to do and they were asking, can we participate in this also? Can we participate as facilitators? Can we come in and help out? I have some expertise or interest in the area. And we made the conscious decision to, to, to say we want to build with what we have here right now, build with a core that we know. And then in the future, we can revisit as we start to expand and build on what that is. We can start talking about uh, what pockets of the community we can bring in to support the, the program also. Okay. Great. Very good. Uh, Jonas. Actually, I think it's a great initiative. And one, when you first started playing the video, it looked like there are parallels, parallels to like what some professional sports uh, leagues are doing, you know, um, uh, soccer, they take a knee, they stand against racism before the games. So is that, um, and Ray, you probably would know well, um, coaching, is that anything like that happening, you know, formally before games or, and I don't know if this program could kind of trickle into that, maybe at Amherst High, I don't know. We, we aren't right now attached to larger sports leagues. Our program isn't. This is one of, and Becky can correct me if, if, if I'm, misspeaking in a little piece here, but uh, this is one of a bunch of different strands that RISE runs, that RISE is, that they, they cooperate with professional leagues. And, and at some point when we start talking about expanding, we could also latch into professional leagues and, and help ourselves there. In terms of connecting to the schools, RISE is not a we're not right now partnered with the schools in this program. So, so our relationship with Amherst Regional Athletics is, is merely a distant support sort of, sort of relationship. Um, our kids aren't necessarily, we aren't affiliated with the Amherst Athletics Department. Uh, uh, we would love to build a relationship with them, but that isn't our focus right now in terms of, in terms of, uh, taking our message, our our uh, identity messages, taking our affinity messages and introducing them as a way to try and to try and strengthen those Amherst uh, regional programs. But our kids will be in that world. So this program works with NBA, MLB, NHL, NFL, 
you know, Major League Soccer works with all the larger sports industries, working with their players and coaches, um, understanding that sports is a um, sports is a catalyst to change. It's something that unifies people, regardless of you know your background. So they already partner with those organizations. I'd love to have more kids do the program next year and see um, how it translates up to the high school. Um, the thing about RISE is like, they tackle really hard conversations kind of strategically. I've been really impressed with how delicately they've handled hard conversations, how they present and Maria facilitates. And I'll give kudos to our um, APD officers who have really handled some really difficult, uncomfortable questions from kids and then responded with empathy and humility. Um, it's it's a joy to watch. Um, but yes, we do want to bring this, um, we do want to bring this program to its full enrollment of 25 kids. We just really wanted to start smaller um, so that we could understand, because we didn't know the curriculum before, you know, we entered into agreement with them. So it, it was a little challenging to figure out. Um, we had many multiple department meetings with CRESS, APD, Town Hall was aware, um, Gabe Ting was super supportive, um, DEI is super supportive. So we have a lot of town agencies. Um, the school is aware they're not ready to partner with us on this initiative. Um, but I think seeing it and hearing from the kids goes a long way in helping that come to fruition. Great. Well, thank you for that update. It's exciting stuff. Um, all right, what's next? Um, uh, we I actually, <laughs> uh, Becky, I also asked Becky just to give an update on morning movement and on our, we mentioned morning movement here before and also our uh, sensory training with Culture City, so. Um, so last week, was it only last week, Ray? Yes. Um, we and APD officers and um, several students from um, the middle school presented before school committee about morning movement and mentoring. Um, Amherst Recreation is using about $27,000 this year out of ARPA funds identified for outreach um, that the town received to run a morning movement and mentoring program out of the middle school that serves seventh and eighth grade students. Um, it's a kids come, they play basketball, they get mentoring and homework help. Um, I can send you all the link to um, in the time capsules to watch the uh, school committee. It was really powerful. Um, what the kids had to say about the program. It's absolutely um, one of the greatest things I see all week with um, kids playing uh, in the middle school gym and high school gyms and weight rooms. Um, we have st student volunteers from UMass and Amherst College that come and help with homework. We're tracking grades and school attendance, and it's just really a super positive program. And I'd love for you all to learn more about it. I'll uh, send Ray all the information to share with you. And um, our last update is um, that hopefully sometime this week, we'll be receiving um, sensory inclusivity training through Culture City. Um, the town, we're using ARPA funds again, um, where it's a comprehensive sensory inclusive training. Um, it's an online module that our forward-facing staff and recreation will take. It helps them be aware of sensory sensitivities that individuals might have and helps them identify and utilize tools to help bring someone back into regulation. Um, our camps, our after-school programs, our aquatics, um, you know, hopefully our coaches, like we, we need to get, um, 80% of our forward-facing staff, so anyone who interacts with 
um, the public will take this course and then we'll get sensory certified. Um, so just we're expanding our opportunities to the community to participate in our programs by making it more successful, like meeting kids where they are and helping them be successful. Feedback from from the community has been very positive. People who who have expressed their their uh, appreciation for those efforts and and inclusion and involvement. So, away we go. Anyone have any questions on either of those? Matt, I do. Yeah. So, how many people are in the morning movement and mentoring? And like, is it like a one hour or what is it? Um, so right now we have 69 students enrolled with 30 to 40 attending daily. Um, most of our budget that we're paying for is we're transporting um, 21 students, our level three, um, like tier three uh, support students um, to the school every day. So they get picked up at their house around starting around 6.15, the vans go out and bring the kids in, They um, it runs 7 a.m. through 8.45 each day. Um, so that, that they get picked up earlier than that, and that's when they arrive? They arrive so at that's, 7. So yeah. that's, that's quite a substantial chunk of time. It okay. is. And um, it's awesome. Like, it is <laughs> absolutely a fantastic program. So it runs less formally than the RISE program, but it has some of the same goals. We get kids to school. They do warm-ups. Um, we have lots of student athletes and Amherst College students in attendance. Um, Maria Vega, who is um, our amazing RISE facilitator, is our morning movement and mentoring facilitator. She's been on our staff since September. Um, she runs the program. They do you know, they do games, have fun, and then she targets mentoring to kids um, in kind of subgroups, I would say. She finds, she has global messages, and then she's also building those one-on-one -on -one connections that are really helping kids be more successful at school, both behaviorally and with their grades. Very good. Any any other questions for Becky? Uh, well, I guess, do you have funding to continue this or is, is someone else going to start picking it up or? Um, great question. Um, so the town is allowing us to use $36,000 next year of ARPA money identified for outreach to run this program again. Um, we're going to expand up to ninth grade next year as well to at least start them in that transition to high school and help them be a little more successful. And then we have no more ARPA money and um, we're exploring, we're actively exploring ways to find funding for this program. And in so. this one, unlike RISE, in this one, our main, our main partner is the school department. Uh, uh, it was a pilot that they ran before and we've stepped in to help them and, and help facilitate that. We they've been terrific partners uh, for us up to this point, and I'm hoping, obviously, that they will uh, continue to want us uh, and and program in with us here also. But it's been a really strong relationship that we've had with the school department. And I, also, I, I might be I miss this. Is this five? Is this every day, or is this just one day? Monday, How many days a week? Thursday. Four Monday to Thursday, four days a week. Mm -hmm. Wow. We don't take attendance if if kids show up for all of those days, which many of them do. Then, then terrific. We don't. There isn't. We do take attendance. We, every I mean, day. we take attendance, but we don't. We don't. Uh, we don't punish kids who can't make it or choose or select themselves out. We we follow up with the family center and monitor their attendance and see there 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 are reserve spaces and so we want to make sure the people who want to be involved can be involved but it's not a class it is an elective uh, opportunity that they're, that they're taking with us you and said there's about 
60 or how many registered, but only like 30. So um, on an average, do you have 30 a week? Is that it? Or? So on average, we have uh, 30 to 40 a day. A day. Yeah. Um, And then they can choose which days they're going to. Like, it's hard to get up really early four days in a row. But, yeah. you know, so some kids do Monday, Thursday, or, you know, they pick and choose. But we do have a core group of probably, you know, 25 kids that come all four days. So, so all the kids who have signed up come at least once or twice a week or something. Yep. Okay. That's great. Excellent. All right. All right. Um, I think that was it, Becky, for updates? Yeah. Does anyone say that any as if that's not a lot? For me? I could go oh, on if good. you want. I, I, know, lots of you. Other <laughs> I know your agenda is kind of. <laughs> so yeah, no, thank you. We are very oh, proud of the programs. Doing. The programs are some of the things that we're proudest of here uh, right now because they do have such new energy. They have such such uh, you know positive energy. The community has been responding very well, and I certainly tip my hat and thank Becky for all the work that she's put in on it. Yeah. Um, the kids have been fantastic. I'll just make a comment similar to what I made last meeting, which is this is really kind of like the Youth Empowerment Center. I know it. I know. I remember what you said last time and that came up in a conversation I had outside of it. Yes, I agree. There is, there is, there are many of the elements of that youth empowerment center that we're looking at are representative in the programs that we're putting together and we can put that together with the town and try and figure out what we're doing with that. But what, what the youth empowerment center is looking for, we are starting to nibble at some of those programs while we figure out what the, what the details are of the center. All right. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Becky. All right, um, everyone have a great night. Yeah, Thank you too, Becky. All right, uh, I think Amy is up next uh, to give us the latest on War Memorial redesign. Hey, Amy. Hi, guys. Um, I, I gosh, after uh, after hearing everything that Becky's <laughs> up to, I I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not going to thrill you guys quite as much, but um, yeah, I just wanted to, a couple of things going on with the the War Memorial project. Um, you know, the big thing is obviously we're still progressing forward with, um, with design of that and earmarking having at least enough of a design by July, like basically the beginning of July that we can um, apply for a park grant or, and, or um, the land water grant. Um, both of those, I actually just recently saw that they're, they just published the dates on that. So it's, I think it's like July 10th or something for those applications due. So now we, a date is out there to be thinking about. So we are working towards those. Um, the, um, right now they've done the survey. They've kind of done a preliminary review of kind of all the information that's there to get the lay of the land and are um, digging into design. We've had several meetings with key staff members who just kind of take all of the ideas and try to focus it down to enough ideas that at least they can um, reasonably be moving in one direction. Um, but um, kind of one of the next steps is we are gonna be having a public meeting that's gonna be coming up. Um, it's gonna be May 6th at seven, I think it's at 7 p.m. The, I just don't quite have the time on that yet. Um, so I will be sending a link, um, I mean, obviously to Ray and Dave, but also um, Andrew, if I can send it to you and you can get it to the um, committee, I'd really love for you guys to be there. We're planning on having it virtually so that hopefully as many people as want to participate can be there um, and, and hear their feedback. Um, and um, yeah, that's, so that's kind of the big, the big next steps is two weeks from tonight will be um, at right about now, <laughs> um, will be, um, you know, the, the designer will be presenting it and kind of talking about where they're at and then talking about where, what some of the decision points are at that point. So, um, so that's kind of the, I don't know, really brief overview, but I'm happy to answer questions. I think a lot of it, they're going to talk about there. So I don't, um, I don't know that I, I need to hash it all out with your full sure. agenda. Um, but Dave, Ray, I know you guys have been involved in the process as well. I don't know if you guys have anything you want to add that I'm missing at this point. 
I do not. Maybe we hit questions and see if, uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I guess two quick ones. Who is the designer? Sure. So the designer, um, we picked Kuth Ranieri. Um, and they're a designer that's, um, their main base is out of California, but they have a East Coast base. And they're actually the ones who designed the pool house up in Buckland. Um, they've done several other in the area, but Buckland's the kind of recent, really local to us one. Um, and they're partnering with Berkshire Design as well. So Berkshire Design, who is also very familiar to the town, is also um, involved in this project as well. Okay. Um, and then for the meeting in two weeks, so I guess who is, you, you, do you need rec commission? Or I guess is rec commission hosting? Or do you need us to host? Or this is, we're just getting an invitation. I I wasn't going to ask you guys to host, but I would certainly value having all of your guys' voices there. Um, I, I look at okay. Dave. I, it's open meeting law. If if too many of them are here, are we going <laughs> to do, do we just call it a rec commission meeting? I'm not sure about that. Um, I guess would well, it be, is there any need for it to, would there be any benefit of the rec commission sort of hosting it or... Um, no, there's are, like the, the, the approach we're using is, um, is perfectly adequate. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't see a downside to having it kind of co-hosted by the town and the commission, the department. I mean, it's, we're all one, we're all working toward the same goals. So, um, if, if, if you were going to do that and I, regardless, I think, uh, it would be up to Ray to pull you all to see if you're going to be there. So if you're if there's a quorum yeah. of the commission going to be there, you do need to post it as a public meeting. Probably safe just to do that anyway. If if many of you are going to be there, yeah, so, yeah. I don't want to overcomplicate. I was I wasn't sure no, if we could make not, it easier. I, mean, for I think that's a fantastic question, and yeah. we may post just in case, especially if if there is some interest. We may just post it that. The commission is co-hosting, even if we don't have the the meeting there. Um, cover yeah. cover ourselves at. Great. Okay, and Amy, that's on May sixth. You said May sixth is the date that we chose, and Do you have um, a time, and it's ten Monday. tentatively seven o'clock. But I haven't heard back from um, the consultant on whether that time is okay. Um, yeah. But that's tentatively what we're thinking of, which I know is the same time as a town council meeting. It's just. The, the consultant that was that was the date that they said worked for them so yeah. recognizing I, I would, that Dave you're going to do the thing where you have two computers going <laughs> <laughs> I would just add Andrew I mean I, I Ray and I have participated in most of the meetings I think and and the consultant is really creative but you know not also practical at the same time you know often you get you get consultants on buildings on playgrounds and you know, and and yeah, they can design, we can design almost anything if the budget is is limitless. And we, you know, we're trying to be really practical. When I saw the images of the Buckland uh, 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 field house or-, or uh, the, the Bath house. Bath house associated with the uh, pool, I was, I was blown away. So that's one that, I don't know if Ray can send around, we have those images, but it's very practical, a small community like Buckland and- Wow, it was just really well done. So I, I think it's a great process and no question, we're gonna have to populate this area around the War Memorial Pool and the bathhouse over time. Or, you know, we're just not gonna be able to wave a magic wand and have, you know, X number of dollars available. But this is a plan for the future of how we, how we create a, a beautiful, you know, usable space around the pool. Um, so. Very cool. Great. Yeah, uh, Ray, if you have those Buckland photos, that'd be great if you don't mind uh, sending them around. Will do. Um, I'm sure they'll any... show some of those during the meeting as well. Um, but yeah, they did yeah. some innovative things in Buckland also like to save square footage because you know every square foot costs additional money. And so rather than like say you have to shower before you jump in the pool. And so they put the showers outside, um, outside of the building rather than inside. Cause inside then you have to have them in the men's locker room, the women's yeah. locker room, you know, the family, the non-gender family 
area as well. And it just takes up that much more space. And then people don't use them as much when they're inside anyway. And so stuff like that even showed me that they're very conscious of trying to balance practicality and cost along with something that's, you know, innovative and very forward thinking. So I've been impressed with them nice. so far. Great. Yeah. Um, anybody else have any questions for Amy? Um, just real quick, last time at our last meeting, we talked about that there was going to be a survey that was going to be given to the public or, you know, users of the pool. Do you, do you have any information about that or who's doing that survey? Was that, was that me? Uh, as yeah, I say, I was, was that something meeting, that I was talking about? about that, I, think, yeah. <laughs> what, I think, and perhaps it's just that I didn't say things clearly. It's more we're going to have these public forums to get feedback. I guess I wasn't thinking it was a yeah. survey where we would get written feedback. But Ray, I don't know if you were thinking of supplementing some of that with a with a survey to get any sort of written information for people that couldn't participate. That's kind of what I understood from okay. we talked about think, in our last meeting, but I could be wrong. Thank you. I, I think a broad canvas might be, uh, we could we could certainly look at doing a, a supplemental uh, okay. um, survey for you know, yeah, I don't, I, the public canvas. Ray, I'm happy to work with you to, um, you know, think of a couple of questions that would really kind of yeah, help to drill down on some of the questions that we're hoping to get during this public meeting as well. And, and, both of these not only is trying to get us a project that that is viable that the community stands behind, but also showing, you know, for the park grant and for these other grant applications that the public has been very involved in the process and is very interested. So it's a great idea to get more feedback. I think yeah. the question, yeah, the question, like, mm -hmm. I'll say like putting up some I, flyers with a QR code or something to, you know, to have people. That's right. right. I yeah. guess just I, I I'm just wondering whether you'd be better off having a having a open-ended survey or whether you'd be better off having asking people to respond to something concrete like i'm not like part of the thing about having it as a community forum like that you can get people to respond to something concrete and it might be more constructive am i making sense it doesn't have to be yes. responding directly to an actual plan it could be even responding to just a list of um requirements a list of of of, of, of features mm -hmm. um uh you know these are features we're considering which ones do you prefer you know rate weight the ones that you prefer what are the three that you think are essential rather mm -hmm. than just what do you want oh yeah of right. course yeah yeah Great. and uh, it's always nice to leave just like a any extra comments you know section at the right, bottom right, right, right. But, but something give them something concrete to answer correct yeah I, I think if i could we can we can look at that <clears throat> i think you know it's a great idea and to matt's point as of may 6th you know there will be concrete concepts to to talk about and and share with people so um the yeah. one question i have is we've hit folks with a lot of surveys in the last couple of months so we're doing the open space and recreation plan survey and then Amherst Rec did their own survey. And so uh, right. a little bit those, of survey. Are, those are kind of open-ended, a bit more open-ended. Yeah, a little bit of survey fatigue. But I think if we put out some images and some concept plans yeah. that are easy to digest, we could we could really get some good feedback for, for the point Amy made about um, showing the state that we've had a robust process of input. And again, this is more than about the bathhouse. This is about the area around the bathhouse and what do we want to see there? You know, um, what kind of activities, what kind of uh, facilities? And that that will elicit, I think, some really positive feedback. So very cool. That, that latter point remind me, Dave, just I think last month we heard about the, and I, I don't have my notes handy, unfortunately, but the that sort of fitness, the fitness station, essentially that we were looking to maybe co-locate. Is that, is that at all going to be discussed or is that um, court, um, kind of out of scope? Well, I know that Amy, Ray and other staff are, are due to have a conversation. We're going to meet this week, but I think we pushed that off a week. Um, it certainly could be right now. It's not in the mix there. It's, it, we can talk more, Amy, Ray, and myself. I'm not sure the dimensions really work in that space, but um, you know, yeah. 
we're considering playground and, and maybe a spray, a small spray pad and, and some other amenities, picnic table, small pavilion, et cetera, et cetera. So there's not a lot of room there <laughs> to work yeah, with, but, um, I, but yeah, but we're looking. I, it makes sense. Uh, real quick, Amy, I'm, I was just going to say that it, I, it felt like it was very preliminary early on. And that's kind of why I had that question is, is this yeah. something that had advanced since we last talked where it's now in scope or it's still kind of a side project that we're considering? It sounds like the latter. Yeah. I mean, I'll say that even just we're at the level in this whole process where it's, you know, we're not saying like, oh yeah, we're gonna have a spray park and it's gonna have this element and that element. So even in general, as we're talking about it, we're talking about, you know, potentially having a playground for kids and families, not talking about the elements that make up that, you know, sure. having an area that's attractive to adolescents, which potentially could be a sports court, but we're trying not to define it based on the actual element, but instead just say, who do we think the users of this park are? And then how do we give them enough space? Um, so it's not precluding it, but it's also not definitely saying, yeah, this is the element, because that seems a little putting the cart before the horse, deciding what the answer is before you know who the users of the space are. So, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And makes if, sense. I could, if I could add, one of the things we're also looking at, and, and I really like what Amy just said there is, you know, again, the sport court, might be a an opportunity to serve uh, uh, um, an age group that we're not currently serving all that well at at that space. Um, but the other piece is we're also looking at the role that area has played as a war memorial and for whether it's Memorial Day or Veterans Day or or any of those. And you know you're well aware that we are redoing the, the the North Common in front of Town Hall, and that will include a very large gathering place for um, for various events that could include Memorial Day, Veterans Day, uh, raising of certain flags, all sorts of events, the Mer Merry Maple, etc. So there may be an opportunity to to kind of look at that space in front of Town Hall to to honor our veterans in a more significant way. So we're looking at that as well, because there just really isn't a lot of real estate around the War Memorial Pool. It's pretty tight in there. Yeah, so that makes more sense. Yeah. So uh, that's, all exciting, that's, very exciting at the, yeah. at the conceptual stage. Lastly, lastly, on my part, uh, looking at my notes from last time, uh, I think part of the conversation that Jean was referring to about surveys, uh, uh, was our readiness to use our uh, our pools and our operations of the pools to canvas for information that is still a commitment of ours to to uh use war memorial and use mill also but to use war memorial as a way of canvassing the community and getting information very good all right uh any other questions for amy well, thank you for the update. Um, appreciate it. And uh, Dave, thank you as well. Uh, I think we're on to the next item then, which is the uh, open space rec plan update, Ray. Thank you. I think that, I think that both of these can go pretty quickly. Um, uh, uh, we've mentioned the open space recreation plan uh, at this meeting here a couple of times now and where are we now? We are. We've uh, we closed the the survey on April fifth, and so we've we've done our data collection. We've we've got we've canvassed and gotten an, a lot of community feedback. We've gotten good community feedback there. Um, and now, what do we do with it? We're in the process of trying to compile that information. We're in the process of to remind you that the the information that we're gathering in this for conservation and recreation purposes, the open space and recreation uh, uh, survey, the, this this process here does make us eligible for for applying for grants. This is an important piece of of information to update. We're working on a 2017 our our most our most recent. Uh, uh, survey was the was 2017, and so we're, we're in the process of updating that to make ourselves eligible for these current grants. Um, where do you all come in? Um, in in early May, and 
looking like we have a bunch of action around the same time here as, as we had two presentations that are sort of in the same channel. But early May, but somewhere between the 6th and the 10th, uh, and then a second time and a stretch of time between the June 3rd, June 7th. So we're spacing them out about a month apart. We are going to be holding uh, uh, basically public outreach sessions to get people's uh, get people's uh, uh, impressions of uh, the results that we've that we've been able to call from the from the surveys, to get their impression of where we should be going, and to get their feedback as we put together our final our final draft for the new open space and recreation uh, plan. Uh, that. That outreach includes uh, a number of different uh, ways of making sure it's available for people. Uh, we're going to be scheduling in-person uh, in-person meetings for people to uh, swing by, meet us. Maybe at in rec spaces. It may be in town hall. It may it we like it may even be out in town spaces in the parks. Uh, but we're looking at doing in-person meetings with the community, uh, timing to make sure that people have have access. We also may be scheduling an optional Zoom for a, a separate optional Zoom, so we don't have to lug a Zoom camera in for that in-person meeting, and also providing a fillable online form for people to to uh, uh, sort of respond and give us information. I do. We are very wary and alert to survey fatigue. So that's why that's not the, the biggest, uh, it, that's not the, the the most central. We'd love to get people in person. We'd love to get people's sort of engaged personal feedback. Um, and so those two, those two areas, May 6th through 10th, June 3rd through 7th, we'll have more information on the town site with recreation postings to get people, our folks in, in recreation, the people who, who use our services. We're going to try and get them uh, attached into this process so we can do this, this, this basically a last sprint through public response before we put together a final, a final draft. Um, and so with that, I, I will say that once again, as the commission, part of the reason why we want to make this presentation is because this is a public record of what we're doing, but also to solicit if anybody in the in the commission would like to be involved in that process, then I can tell you that uh, our you know, we and our friends in planning are definitely looking for people to be involved. Uh, uh, if you if you would like to certainly reach out to me uh, and I can connect you in to that process if you want to help at all and in, in, in sort of facilitating some of that public engagement in those in those two stretches. Help as so when you when you're seeking help, that's as a facilitator you're saying or to, to facilitate like uh, if we do a panel discussion in person to have commission members present for that. Uh, even potentially on the panel to discuss. Got it. Got it. Uh, okay. Got it. Dave? Yeah, again, I don't want to overtax the commission, but it is going to be a busy time and we're all we're all kind of racing for this deadline. I mean, this plan really has to be submitted um, you know, around the same time that you know grants will uh grants will be uh going in as Amy mentioned earlier. So um, one is is quite dependent on the other. Um, we we are not eligible for some of those grants if we don't have at least a draft in. So it's going to be a busy two months uh, here, May and June. But um, to raise uh, just his announcement there, you know, these are other meetings, Ray, where the Conservation Commission and the um, the Rec Commission could co-sponsor these events, uh, these these public meetings. So. You know, getting a few members of the commission or all of you there, whatever works. I know you all have busy lives, work lives, and family lives, but you know, the more the, the more the better. And um, again, staff will run most of the meetings, but we'd love if if needed or if you're interested in helping to facilitate some of the conversations, it'll be great. And a lot of it will be focused on the recreation side. Frankly, a lot of it will be focused on on programming, you know, we're hearing a lot from these surveys about what kind of programming people want, what kind of improvements, you know, we know we need to invest more in upkeeping our recreation areas, investing in our recreation areas. And that's part of the reason that, you know, Amy and others are doing all this great work at War Memorial, but what do we need at these places from, 
you know, improved restrooms to, you know, re, re, um, redoing uh, ball fields to other, other amenities, pickleball, and the list goes on. So um, uh, we are likely not going to be acquiring more land for recreation. And frankly, our conservation acquisition is really slowing down. Um, so a lot of it's going to be focused on on programming and facilities. So, and to give you an idea, like the 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 actual uh, final draft that we come up with is also it's sort of vector driven. It's it's pointing us in the direction. It, it doesn't have to be that you have to try and describe what we are right now. A large part of it is what we're trying to become. A large part of it is summarizing what 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 resources we have, but then also what our intentions, you're setting the, the, the agenda, that, that draft will set the agenda for open space and recreation for the next uh, few years. Makes sense. <clears throat> um, well, I will say relative to getting support and co-sponsoring, I think those all make sense. If you had started to sort of outline some dates, but if you could kind of share what those dates might be times overall commitments as soon as, and stuff like as soon as they yeah. become finalized i will make sure i get them to you as soon as we get sort of a narrowed down it'll be this day this you know these days and these times i'll make sure i get those to you okay and are we generally thinking like an evening type of meeting time or could this be middle of day as well we wanted to balance it for people with childcare issues. We wanted yeah, to balance exactly. it for for to make sure we had coverage of all the different parts of the community that might need early times, late times. So there'll probably be a mix. Okay. Yeah, yeah let I'd us definitely know. be interested, yeah, in helping out. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Uh okay. Any other questions for Ray or Dave on OSRP? And uh, Cherry Hill is next. Okay, and so we've been looking at Cherry Hill for a little bit of time here. As you know, it's it's been it's an interesting budget uh, quandary that we are that we find ourselves in. Um, we are operating a golf course that that has budgetary issues, um, and so what I'm going to be putting what we're in the process of putting before the town manager right now is a working group proposal uh, where we want to try and put together a working group of, of commission members, uh, people in the community, uh, people with a vested interest in, in Cherry Hill, a, a small group of people that can look at a number of different things um, to basically to, to uh, assess, analyze the history of the course, which is sort of a straightforward piece of it, you know, our acquisition of it, what it what it is, what it has meant here in the town, what what it's, uh, how it's been situated inside of our 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 town and our budget. But then to then, then to look very carefully at the budget stresses, uh, I've outlined for you all some of the ones that I've seen as a manager of it. But to basically basically look at this as an objective group that will be looking into just what those stresses are. Uh, and and how they uh, 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 how they play a role in in the functioning of our at I think Cherry Hill is an important asset that we have that we need to try and figure out what we're doing. Uh, we're looking at comparing to munif municipal golf standards in the area and around, trying to find out what municipal what it takes to run a municipal golf course, what it takes to run a course this size, this in this in this area. We we have a because it is our our asset it is our property we're looking for a way to try and see what it is that that other similar courses uh, are running into what their history is what their what their how they uh, sustain themselves and of course our operational options uh, you know what what different choices do we have about managing ourselves looking at at other management opportunities but we need to look at what uh, the future of Cherry Hill is. And so now that we're sort of moving through the other side of the budget uh, of the budget season, my interest is in putting a Cherry Hill working group together so that we can start to get some answers in that sense. It, you know, uh, I will obviously be involved in it. Uh, I will obviously be involved in it heavily, 
but I'm looking for again to probably in this case two and not not more and not less, but I'm probably looking for two commission members that would want to do some of that research, do some of that hard thinking, and do some of that that analysis into just what the business of golf looks like for the town of Amherst. I know, I know Chris and Sanjay have raised their hands in the past and have a passion for this, so not to speak for that. I think Chris, Chris and Sanjay. You unmuted yourself, yeah. I think Chris and Sanjay are still in. I haven't talked to Sanjay. I just saw him, him at an event a while ago, and he we kind of had a very quick conversation. And I, I don't. I'm I'm in. Um, I, I think now I don't want to speak for him, but I think he would still be in. That that was my hope. I know that those were the two names that were most prominent in in uh, interest there, and so I will I will be reaching out to you when I when I speak to town manager and we start moving the, the next steps of this forward. Um, I, I'd like this to be something that is useful for the town, obviously, but it's a, it'll be my first participation in a working group in the town since I've been here. And that's, I think that that is, and I, I think it's an important piece because there's so much about that budget. We, we're responsible for three budgets. I'm responsible for three budgets, operating budgets here and that's that's been one that has had its challenges um and i probably am intentionally understating that a little bit but that's given me some that's been some challenges for us and we were trying to find a way to get some definition inside of those challenges so thank you chris and i will follow up with Sarge. all right i think when you uh, i'm just gonna my last thing on that one for tonight is when you when you reach out to sanjay and i can you give us like kind of everything like budget yes. expenses like i mean we you know to, to, to throw a good dart at a, a, at a good dart board we need as much information as as the town can give us um, yep. you know it's a viable entity um we, we spent all this time talking about pools and pools and pools yep. and you know um, it's it's time to the golf course for starting golfers and and people that can't afford to play at other places is the thing so I probably even before, and the sooner the yeah. sooner the better because we are in that season. Yes, you know? even before we get that working group together, I think that I probably will pull you and Sanjay together just to pick your brains a little bit about where you are. I can I can I can provide some of the information that I've provided you all already, and sort of talk about some of it and 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 go over what it is that I've seen so far. I think it goes deeper one of the reasons why i think a working group is important for us is because i know it goes deeper than my own experience has 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 uh displayed for me i think we've got a pretty good thumb on some of it but we've been trying to manage and get get by this so uh i see david's hand is up yeah dave what's on your mind yeah i just want to put it out there we just I know Ray has talked to you about this before and, and, you know, we're, as Ray said, we're getting through the budget season. Obviously the, the, the town manager hasn't presented his FY 25 budget yet, but you know, nothing's going to happen with Jerry Hill in the next year in the, in the FY 25 budget. So there's virtually no changes. This is, this is a long-term look at Cherry Hill. And so this working group really, I just want to caution a little bit to not put the cart before the horse here. Paul Bachelman is the only one that can appoint a working group. So really what needs to happen at this point is Ray, I've heard Chris volunteer and I believe Sanjay, if if the commission wishes to put forth those two names to Paul Bachelman to be on this uh, 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 working group, that's great. Um, I think Ray Ray's role right now is to put forth a charge for the working group that Paul supports. And again, we'll decide on the number of people. Is it, you know, it's probably seven people is my guess, maybe nine, I don't know. But, um, you know, Paul will kind of approve a charge, uh, um, uh, a timeline. This is a, this is not a, a an endless task here. This might be eight months to a year looking at the budgets, the program at Cherry Hill, a little bit of the history and saying, where do we go from here? The challenge really, and you know, the word sustainability is overused these days in a lot of different spaces, but we really got to look at, you know, is golf a sustainable operation for the town of Amherst? That's the bottom line. And it's not unique to, to Amherst. 
I mean, South Hadley runs a municipal course. They've gone through the same thing. Many municipalities in New England who run uh, municipal courses have gone through this. So we need to look at, we need to kind of open it all up, look at it, uh, look at the, the, the pros of running a, a municipal course and also look at some of the challenges. And as, as Ray has said, the budget is a clear challenge. We've got old infrastructure at Cherry Hill. We've got old pumps, old irrigation, older equipment. Um, we have staff that have been there for many, many years trying to keep an operation running, which kudos to them, they have done that, but it's not easy uh, on a nine hole course. So all of those things are part of this charge. So um, I think this would be uh, typically a working group has a clear beginning, middle and end. It has a, it has a charge. It has a product that the town manager, usually it's a report of some kind that would come out of the working group. And as I said, I don't know whether this would be eight months, might be eight months to a year. I don't know if it can be done quicker than that. That's probably realistic. So, um, but nothing's gonna happen with Cherry Hill at this point for FY25. It's it's business as usual and and run a, have a great season uh, and keep golf going up there on the hill in North Amherst. Thanks for the clarification. Yes, thank um, you, David. You, and actually you had touched upon the only comments I was gonna say is, there must be lots of other municipalities in the area that we can um, we can partner with or share ideas with who, uh, to your point, Dave, have gone through the same challenges. So hopefully as we think about what that group looks like and who's on it and who they get information from and where they get information from, we can leverage some best practices from uh, yeah. from folks who've gone through this before us. And also look creatively. Are there other things that we could be doing better with golf around the edges we've looked at disc golf we've looked at you know obviously there are many um asset uh, many uh, pluses up there on the on the hill uh nordic skiing weather permitting <laughs> is now you know uh, took hold up there the last couple of years obviously this past year wasn't so great but anyway nordic skiing brought some value added uh winter fest etc cetera, etc cetera. so there are many things to look at not just the golf operation but there's 80 acres up there in north amherst and um, what can they do for us both with golf and other other activities? So yep. it should be really exciting to be part of that group, I think. Excellent. Um, anybody else have any comments or questions for Ray or Dave? All right. So, Ray, you are up for connecting with Chris and Sanjay and um, look forward to hearing how things go um, just broadly. So thanks. All right, uh, let's see, next item we've got, looks like update on prior discussions. I'm not sure if that's an actual item or not. Is that, if not, we could just be at old business. Um, any old business for us? Any new business? All right, then it's a report of the chairs. So Jean, anything um, from your side to report? No, I don't have anything. I was at the sustainability um, fair last Saturday, and that was nice to see that there was that the rec group was there. And I was actually talking with someone from Crest, um, who she's fairly well. She's been was in, from the area, who's moved back to the area recently, um, and is a yoga instructor. And we were talking about how she would really want to get more involved with the rec committee and or with and with the rec in general in the area. And was wondering if we ever offer like free like exercise classes like out on the commons or you know anything like that that she would really be interested in you know doing something like that i don't know if we have in the past or if the, anyone has any information the contact for for community program would be becky Demling in our office uh we are right now trying to streamline and make it easier for for people to come in and teach classes or to, to initiate classes if there's there's a groundswell of people that say we we want to do x in the park we want to do this then we can look at trying to invest resources in making that happen um, if there's somebody who wants to facilitate and lead then then uh, i would connect that person with becky okay I, I got her contact information so i will do that excellent great All right, and then from my side, I've got uh, I've got no updates other you know just happy to hear um, 
certainly all the work Becky's doing and status on the pool and let us know again, Ray, just as the schedule starts to formulate how we can help. And, uh, and also happy to hear that the, the, we're making some progress in Cherry Hill. I know that's, that's something we've discussed a little while ago. So I'm glad it's back on the agenda. Um, all right. And then any reported staff, Ray, anything new? No. All right, Dave, you are, you, you count, what would you like to, to add? Yeah. Um, before you wrap up, just a couple of quick updates. Um, 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 and, and I, I know they weren't on your agenda, but Ray and I continue to have conversations with the pump track community. Um, the, so the whip community. Pump pump track. Track. It's These like are, BMX bicycle. Yeah. Okay. okay. Folks, uh, uh, adults and their children who are you know, their kids who are really into BMX bike, uh, opportunities and there's there's what do we call pump tracks again all over New England and they're sprouting up in different communities so we're at the very early stages I mean this is another discussion about resources and real estate and and so we're just talking with them a little bit so that was one quick update just so the commission knows um also just an update uh on the trails at Hickory Ridge are now if you've gone by there they're now under construction uh, we kind of kicked those off last Friday, so again, weather permitting, we will be um, we will be under construction. Taylor Davis Landscaping got the contract, which is nice. They were the low bidder, a local a local firm, and they're right down the street from Hickory. So you'll see yeah. all the silt fencing up in the fields, and that is to protect uh, wildlife as well as to protect wetlands. So uh, in the next couple of months, I would say by the end of June, uh, June July uh, ish. Uh, many of those trails will be done, and then some of them will be finished up later in the summer, early fall. Um, multiple miles of accessible trails uh, for running, for hiking. Biking may not be, you know, the premier activity out there, but we'll see how whether that's a compatible use. And then finally, the other update I had or announcement I had, I believe we we can get this confirmed. Ray and I can confirm this. But I believe we're going to have an update at the April 30th school committee meeting, regional school committee meeting on the track and field project. Um, I want to confirm that. Um, I'm just putting it as tentative right now, but Ray and I can confirm that with the superintendent. But I believe there will be an, uh, an update uh, from our consultant, the town's consultant, who is working on the design and possible options for track and field at the at the high school. So April I'm 3rd. intrigued. Yeah. That is exciting. And I hadn't heard that uh, yeah, so timeline. Let's we'll get we'll get that date and send it out. Ray can send that out. Um Ray, if you kind of ding me and we'll we'll get that date confirmed for you. But I believe that's when it'll happen. Next, what is that next Thursday, week from Thursday? Awesome. Um, well, and congrats on getting work started uh on the trails. I'm, I drive by it all the time and I'm looking forward to uh getting up there. Uh, could, Jonas. Yeah, I could mention um David is Ian Camera been involved at all with the pump track? He's uh Samantha uh Sam. I, be I believe so. There's a group yes. of about four yeah. or five people that have been coming to the meetings. Okay. Yes. He's built his own he's built yes. his own track with it for his kids in his like his parents, Ian, parents, parents place. Ian is the one that uh Kurt was just looping in with us here this week maybe even today was asking to make sure that he's involved in it so uh, he will be heavily involved in our conversation moving forward exciting stuff all right well uh I think that's it so thank you all for, um, just quickly uh, um, uh sorry we have oh, we yeah. done an update for next month's meeting uh, oh, I think um, May 20th, we have a tentative date? Or... Yeah, I will. I need to check my calendar. I've okay. got some travel coming up that time. And obviously, you don't need me to, to, to progress, but maybe we can just do that via email um, okay. after it's nailed down. Sounds good. All right. Great. Okay. Well, um, thanks everybody for their time. Thank you. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night. All right. Thanks.